When it comes to calculus, the key idea for our purposes is going to be the calculus of approximation, approximating functions by polynomials. This is, you guessed it, Taylor expansion. Recall that the Taylor series of a function f with input x about x equals a is the following series. f of x is the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, of the nth derivative of f at a times quantity x minus a to the n all over n factorial. If we expand that out, we get the zeroth order term f at a plus the first order term derivative of f with respect to x at a times quantity x minus a, and then we've got all the other terms, terms of order two and higher in quantity x minus a. If you expand using the change of variables h equals x minus a, that is the distance to a, then what you get is f at a plus h equals the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, nth derivative of f at a times h to the n over n factorial. That is, it's a polynomial in h. Expanding that out gives f of a plus the derivative of f with respect to x at a times h plus all the terms of order h squared and higher. Now, wait a minute. What is that, what is that O of h squared, that big O of h squared? Well, let's think, let's think back, way back to when you learned big O notation. What? You didn't learn big O notation? Well, then let's review it. Big O is a trash can, a giant trash can, where you get to toss all the higher order terms, and you get to say exactly how high they have to be in order to fit in the trash. So to be formal about it, a function g of x is in big O of x to the n as x goes to zero, if, in absolute value, g of x is less than or equal to some constant times x to the n in the limit as x goes to zero. Now, you don't care about what the constant c is. The only thing you care about is that asymptotically, as your inputs are getting really, really small, you're bounded above by something times x to the n. It's all the higher order terms. Now, I understand it can be a little confusing and a little difficult to visualize what's going on, Big O notation is not essential for what we're going to do. It's merely a convenient language. What is essential, what you really need to know, is Taylor expansion. You do need to know those formula, especially the latter one, involving a polynomial in H. We're going to use this very frequently to approximate functions arising in dynamical systems. Now, there are some Taylor series expanded about zero that are just worth knowing, worth memorizing and having at the ready. For example, e to the x is the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. That's a biggie. As are the Taylor expansions of sine and cosine. Cosine of x is the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n over quantity 2n factorial. This is an alternating series with all the even terms of e to the x. The corresponding odd terms give the expansion for sine. Sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over quantity 2n plus 1 factorial. The geometric series is a biggie. 1 over 1 minus x equals the sum. n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. Integrating that and messing around with the signs gives a series for log of 1 plus x. That is, the sum n goes from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x to the n over n, not n factorial. Now, two that a lot of people aren't so familiar with is hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. These are some cool functions. The hyperbolic cosine, or cosh, of x is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity x to the 2n over quantity 2n factorial. The hyperbolic sine, or cinch, is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity x to the 2n plus 1 over quantity 2n plus 1 factorial. These are respectively the even and odd terms of the exponential function. And finally, here's a weird one. Quantity 1 plus x to the alpha is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of alpha choose n times x to the n. 
What is this? This is called the binomial series. That alpha choose n is something called a binomial coefficient. If you don't recall that, we'll talk about it later. The thing that I want to stress is that Taylor series don't always converge to the function you're trying to approximate. Now, some of the time, the radius of convergence is infinite and everything's sweet. The exponential function, sine, cosine, hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, you're all good there. But for three of the ones that we've just seen, the natural log, the geometric series, the binomial series, you've got to worry about convergence. In all three of these cases, you better keep x less than 1 in absolute value in order to get absolute convergence. Now, sure, sure, Taylor series is great, etc., etc., but who really cares about all these details, uh, convergence, and memorizing all that stuff? Look, don't blow it off. You really need to be good at Taylor series in order to understand what we're going to be doing in dynamical systems. Approximation is what Taylor expansion is really built for, and we're going to need to do a lot of approximating. There is no more important tool in all of calculus for doing dynamical systems. If your Taylor expansion skills are a little bit rusty, why not just take a time out, go back, review that, or if you need some motivation first, keep going and see where we're going to use it.